for, a, for the moment. We'll wait a, a few more seconds. Okay, we've got a healthy list of participants, so we'll we'll make a start. Welcome everybody, Cross of Hub. My name is Emma Thomas. Eleni Carrison has joined the conference. Sarah Woodcock <clears throat> has joined the conference. Okay, we'll wait just a few more moments for people to join in, especially those phoning in, because uh, they do need to announce themselves as part of the, the protocol on the NRW system. So please bear with us for a few more seconds. Okay, bear with us, We're, we are here and we will start shortly. Just waiting for a moment in case there are any people still doing log in. There are a lot of people already logged in, but there may be a few more that we're due to await. Okay, we'll start then. Welcome, my name is Emma Thomas. I'm team leader for strategic funding in NRW. Cross of Palv, via you, Emma Thomas, railroad team, Casidos to Tegol. Cross of Ear webinar, Thank you. Uh, welcome to this webinar. Let's start with a bit of housekeeping. Uh, firstly, could you please turn your mic to mute? because this will minimize background noise for everybody. Second point, it might be a good idea to have the forms to hand, the forms that we've emailed you all Andrew Nixon. to hand. Has joined the conference. Now, those of you phoning in already will not have the, 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 the benefits of, of a screen. So please, have the forms to hand so that you can refer and follow the trail of what we're going to discuss. My course of your been Hey Town uh, Council has joined the conference. <laughs> okay, people still joining us, so let's just wait for the moment. Can you hear me? We can hear you, yes. We're just waiting. Oh, we're just to log up. Okay, we Skype Has webinar, the, the, uh, the actual presentation is not in the center of the Skype screen, so we can't see the whole thing. Is that the same for anybody else, do you know? Oh, we can see it okay our end. Is anybody else having the same problem? I'm on phone oh. only, so I can't see I'm on a. So I'm on a phone yeah, only as well. If you're yeah, on phone, phone only, yeah. Yeah then you need to have the application forms and templates available on hand because you've joined the conference so the, the presentation on the screen so if you're if you're on, on the phone only look at the email that we sent early on giving you the result and have the application form and finance template ready to hand Yes, okay, we've got all the paperwork to hand, so we'll, we'll keep trying to get the full screen, but otherwise we'll just do it by phone call. Yeah, I think it's a good idea if everybody has the application form and finance template on hand, because although we are doing an on-screen presentation, the text in places is very, very small and hard to follow. So please, if you can find your email with the attachments and the full application form, Please do that. It's good practice for everybody. Yeah, no problem. We'll just wait a, um, a few more seconds. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kroisopar, welcome everybody. Let me just recap on the housekeeping. First thing, if 
If you can mute your microphone, that's helpful because that blocks out background noise for everybody else. Have the forms on hand. If you haven't got them already, please start digging into your emails and, and retrieving them. Um, you're welcome to ask questions in Welsh. My Croesach Yob in Christian and Agamraig, Noni Geisio Kavyeithi Akateb. This webinar will be recorded and questions and answers shared for those that cannot join us today or over the next. So please be aware of that. This is recorded. If you're on Skype, you don't have to ask verbal questions. You can use the text box to ask questions and to make comments. So we'll try and pick these up as we go along and at the end. So be aware of that. There will be occasions when we cannot give you a final answer today. And we'll note that and we will include those questions in the FAQs, in, in the frequently asked questions and answers, which we will publish as soon as possible. OK. What's the agenda today? Well, firstly, we're going to take a stock take of where we are now. My colleague Helga Dixon is going to just recount where we've got to. The second issue is that we'll very, we will briefly run through the application form. My colleague Claire Southern will, will do that for us. The thirdly, and the big slot on the agenda is the session that will give more detail on the financial aspects, which feature much more strongly than in the EOI stage. Hayley McDonald-Jones from Finance will take us through that. And finally, we'll have general questions at the end. Now, this is mainly for questions and topics not covered earlier. And you can ask questions after we've gone through the, the various components of, of the, the presentation. Um, let me just have a look at the screen and see where we are. I think we've got everybody joined now. L let me just do a stock take on our NRW colleagues were with me today. Helga Dixon is, is with me. She's led on the high level project management of this work and she'll be moving into the stock take of where we are now. Claire Southard, she, she will shortly be looking at the application forms and the process. Amy McDonald Jones, she'll be outlining the finance questions. Joanne Doyle is with me. She'll, she's coordinating the All Wales panel. Jenny Crouch is with me, and she's one of the NRW communities officers. Um, I think that's everybody we've got on the line from NRW. It's possible that Priyan Jardine, our senior management lead for this area of work, may join us at some point. So be aware of that if she does come in. And if there are any questions we can't answer today, we, as I said, we will be looking at preparing a list of frequently asked questions and publishing that shortly on, on, the, on the website for, for us. OK. Thanks for your attention. Helga, would you like to just briefly do the stock taker where we are now? OK. Um, good afternoon. Um, Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, yes. Okay. Just before we start, do you know how we can unmute it sort of so if we make chat at this end or if our computer makes noises it doesn't cut into you? Do you know how to do that? Are you on the phone or be... on Skype? Sorry. Are you on the phone or on Skype? Uh, we're on, on the phone. On the phone. Okay. I think it's a hash and then six. Six, so we'll try that, okay. Okay, let's see if it works. Go. Can you hear us? Yes. <laughs> star six. Imagine if you couldn't, that would have been a funny one. Do star and six. Star. Star. Should we try star six? Yeah. Okay, we'll try that. Hello? Has that worked? I guess it has. Because I guess that's right. <laughs> and I think it's star six to retrieve as well, isn't it? So if you press star again. Can you say that? You'll come back. And that applies to anybody on the phone. 
So star sex, those, that's the magic formula. Helga. Uh, okay. Um, Claire, could you uh, change the, pa uh, page, oh, help. Right. Thank you. Um, okay, well, um, firstly, congratulations on getting through um, the first expression of interest stage. Um, as we sent out in, in the letters, I think you will know that the competition was quite fierce at this point uh, because we did have nearly 200 um, expressions of interest requesting um, over £10 million of NRW funding. So we had to whittle it down quite uh, severely. Um, the reason we did the expressions of interest was, in fact, in direct response to um, the stakeholder event we held last March, where um, we were requested if we could possibly reduce the administrative burden for applying for our funding. So uh, we do realise that while there were some disappointed partners, uh, we hope that at least we've managed to minimise their wasted effort, um, as we couldn't take forward all the projects put, um, that we received. Okay, so the, the important thing to know about this stage, the second stage, that this is also uh, a competitive phase. And so we have to be very careful to ensure that during the next few weeks, we're being fair and transparent to all applicants who are taking part. And so all the information in this session and in the previous session of the next webinar, uh, all the questions and answers will be made to, available to all applicants. Uh, and all NRW staff have been given guidelines on how they can support and what they can't do to ensure that we're consistent across the board. Um, you should have received today um, the FAQs from the previous webinar, and we will add to those with your um, additional questions and with the questions that we receive next Friday. Um, so if we now look at the uh, a very sort of simple outline of the process, uh, Claire, could you just change the slides, please? So um, th this is now uh, the development of the full application is from the 23rd of February to the 23rd of April, and um, the deadline is um, one minute to midnight on Monday, the 23rd of April. And um, Julian Wells has joined the conference. Um, and we aim to uh, assess and moderate the applications um, in the month of May uh, in a similar process that, that we did with the last time with each area state. Melanie Carrison has left the conference. With each area statement area looking um, at the relevant applications. Um, we hope to notify you um, sometime in June and there will be feedback um, for both um, those who are successful and those who are unsuccessful. The successful um, ones will also receive formal offers uh, subject to all the documentation being complete and you will have an NRW grant officer assigned to you. Um, <clears throat> As we, we did mention that, that this this um, competitive round, is, uh, sorry, this second round is also competitive, but the odds are much improved. Um, so we've asked approximately 80 projects to come back to us with a full application, and these total around four million pounds. Um, so uh, we have three million to allocate, um, but so it is competitive, still competitive, but not as competitive as the EOI stage. Okay. Claire, um, can I hand over to you now? Sorry, Helga, I had to, um, I've just had to quickly rearrange just to get back. Right. Sorry, everyone, hopefully you're back. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay, sorry, sorry about that. Right. Um, has joined Hello, the conference. Um, my name's Claire, and my, my role today is just to give you, just to talk through the form a little bit. Um, hopefully by now you should all have received the full application form, which is a Word document, um, a spreadsheet to complete all your project costings into, and a PDF guidance document. Um, we do recommend that you look through these because there's quite a bit of detail in there, but some of that I'll be going over today. Um, you're welcome to submit in Welsh or English your full application form. 
And as the expression of interest phase, many of the word text boxes have a maximum word count. Um, you sort of type into the grey area of the form. Um, the maximum word count is not enforced in the form itself, but we will be monitoring the forms as they come in, and any text beyond the word count will not be included in the information sent onto the scoring panels. Just to raise that with you. Um, at this stage, you are also welcome to include relevant additional information, such as letters of support or extra maps, perhaps copies of insurance policies, if that's relevant. But please do make reference to them in the form and only include relevant information. Um, if you get an opportunity, please try the forms early. And if you come across any problems with the format, please do let us know and we'll try and rectify as quick as we can. You might have noticed on the email yesterday that we sent out with the FAQs, there was an updated version of the form because some applicants were having problems with a white font in the text boxes. So obviously on a white background, they couldn't see the words properly. So we've, we hope we resolve that and we've we sent a new form out that hopefully will work for you. But please do say if you have any problems. Um, so the form follows um, this format. There's five sections to the form, which sounds a lot, but some of them, some of you will only be completing a couple of these sections. So section A and B, the project information and financial details, every applicant will need to fill in. Um, section D and C are optional, and if in, if in your EOI you express an interest in accessing NRW lands to undertake monitoring work, or we're looking for a longer term lease, you will need to complete section C. If you had other requests for support in your EUI, such as access to um, a particular piece of data or certain technical expertise, then you need to complete section D. But if you didn't request any of this, then you can just ignore section D. Um, and then finally, section E is just a checklist and declaration which every applicant will need to complete. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to run through um, uh, a and B, and then Haley's going to pick up section. Uh, sorry, I'm going to run through A. Haley will run quick up section B, and then I'll do the, the last sections. Um, the form. Uh, if you find on the form there's certain limitations that you can't do, like perhaps you need to add more columns or rows. Um, again, do get in touch with us, and we can add those in for you. The form's kind of locked down, so you can only write in certain parts. So what I've got up on the screen now for those of you on the phone is um, just a, a, a screenshot, really, of the beginning of Section A. So this is the general project information. Um, this isn't uh, questions A1 through to A5 aren't scored, these sections. These are just trying to gather general standard applicant detail about you, um, confirming your address again, a little bit about your organization confirming the project location. This might be exactly the same as you put in for your expression of interest, but we've included it here just in case you've refined the area or it has slightly changed. It's an opportunity just to confirm that again. So um, at section A, question A1 through to A5. Um, the grant time scales A4, all projects will need to be completed by the end of December uh, 2019. Uh, 2019, that's right. Um, your start date can be sort of from Ju July onwards this year, wh whatever works for you. And the project partners, this is a, a place to put down the other partners that are involved in the project and what sort of partner they are, so you can show the, the level of collaboration you've got going on. So from question A6, this is where we start asking for a bit more detail about your project. This hopefully will sort of develop from your expression of interest phase. Um, question A6, if you could tick the challenge that your project most identifies with, this hopefully will be the same as your expression of interest phase. We do know that some projects, or many projects, actually um, met several of those top level challenges, but if you could pick the one that you most identify with in your project. And then the text box in A6 is an opportunity for you to tell you tell us about how your project's developed. So, you know, since the EOI phase, have you met some new partners? Um, have you used the feedback to, you know, develop a particular angle or have you got some permissions um, completed? That sort of thing. So it's an opportunity for you to tell us what you've done since the EOI phase um, and, and how you've progressed things. 
Question A7, I'll come on to in a bit more detail in a minute. And then A8 is around um, how you will embed equality, diversity and inclusion within your project. Now, some of your organisations will probably have um, a policy for this. So if you want to attach that, you're welcome to. And then just use a text box to explain how you will use it for the project. If um, you're an organisation that doesn't have an equality and diversity project, you can just use the box to explain how you will make sure you are inclusive, what practical things you'll be doing to make sure people from all backgrounds are involved in the project. Um, and the same will go for the Welsh language question as well. How will you be encourage good bilingual practice in your project? Feel free to attach a policy if you've got one. We don't want to create lots and lots of work for you if you've already got lots of good background already there. But uh, if you haven't, then you can use the text box. Um, same publicity and communications is question A10. Um, and question A11 is about project management. Will you have a steering group or a project board? Have you identified some risks? Um, and you know, welcome to attach a risk assessment, for example, if you've got one in place already. But if you haven't, here's an opportunity. There's 500 words within that box for you to uh, give us a bit more detail about how you're going to manage your project. And then question A12 is around project sustainability. So after December 2019, um, how will the project be sustained? What will be the legacy? What things will be going on after the funding is finished? I will carry on, that's right. I will stop after the next slide and ask if anyone's got any questions on any of this. So um, thank you for your patience. So this is uh, question A7. So this is at the end of the form. The reason this is the end of the form is because um, this is sort of a, a key piece of, of work that will then form part of your grant offer letter. So it makes it just as simple for us to be able to pull this table out and attach it to a grant offer letter. So this question, um, basically develops the logic model that you had in your expression of interest but it's asking for more detail and putting some timings around it so this is one example where we've only put five rows in here if you're going to have lots more activity then um, we can happily add more rows on for you just please just get in touch with us and via email and we'll add some more rows on for you um, hopefully it's quite straightforward so in the, the first column um, you'll be um, putting your activity, what is it you're actually going to do, uh, who's your target audience, if, if you've got a number of partners working on the project, you can identify which partner is going to do that. And then in the next few columns, you can identify which quarter the output will fall. So you can see an example in the shaded area. So our first output is three engagement events to be held in the first quarter of the project. And then three training days at the beginning of uh, 2019 and then following by an increase of data submissions later in the uh, later in the project and the final column is again an opportunity to identify any longer term outcomes so these are things that you would hope your project might be delivering on beyond the, fun the project funding I'm going to just pause there briefly if anyone's got any particular questions on it on section a I'd happily uh, I'm sorry, I can't see the text box, so I can't see if anything has been asked on the text messages. So, I can't see the text in Bangor either. No, 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 no. Okay. I can see the text here. Um, there's no questions posted on this section. Thank you, Joe. Has anybody got any verbal questions before we move on to Haley and the, the financial section of the, of the forums? Hi, um, my name's Ian Danby. I can actually see on my bit there's a question from Colin Cheeseman, which says, if you're working with NRW on a project, should you include them as a partner in question A5? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, we can't see the questions this end, so sorry about that. Oh, sorry, I that's can right. see that one now. Yeah, that's come up on mine now. Okay. Um, what we, I think we need to know what the role of NRW is in in this project before we could give a definitive answer so we can't actually see the question but uh, uh joe could you read it out once more please and would you um capture the questions because we can't see them at all here yep if you are working with nrw on a project should you include them as a partner in question a5 
I think we want to know what NRW and its role is in the project. And we can't actually... So I think that's crucial. Any, any colleagues have a view on, on that? Yeah, NRW, any colleagues view on that? I think if you're, if you're naming anybody as a partner, you should be able to explain what their role in the project is. And yeah, I... Go on, Claire. Yeah, no, I, sorry, I'm just thinking, Colin, yes, I think you could put NRW down and identify what their role is as part of the project. Um, if they've been involved... Um, Yeah, I, yes. The only the only caveat is, and this is something quite important, that for for the application, they should not be involved in drawing it up now at this stage. So the NRW member of staff who you're working with should not be involved in this application. Otherwise, it's NRW applying for its own funding. Yes, that that does stand. Uh, we, we don't want colleagues to give you know to, to support you to the extent that they're writing bits of the application on your behalf. But if you are okay, NRW has been sorry. on the steering group for the project in question for the last two years, so they are a member of the steering group. So they know. Okay, well that happens very. Uh, a lot because NRW is a big organization it's its members its staff are on lots of steering groups so that's fine if you declare that and explain the involvement of that of, of the NRW person then that should be fine okay any other questions yeah um, if I can just ask um, in terms of the expectations of the steering group um, will will there be any reporting, requ special reco reporting requirements that um, NRW will will need um, for these specific projects? Yes. Well, a any grant aided project has a reporting obligation, and I th I believe that their quarter reports have to be prepared to the lead project. So if, if a, a project is accepted for grant funding, a lead officer within NRW will be appointed and they will liaise with the project manager. And quarterly, they will check on the progress of projects, maybe more than quarterly, you know, it could be weekly depending on, on the project, but at least quarterly because the quarterly period is the period where you can submit claims to NRW, then that's a crucial stage in every project for each quarter. That's great. That just gives me an idea of, um, you know, the logistics of the steering group or thinking about existing ones that we've got that could be used as our steering board for the project, potentially. Okay, could, could, sorry, could you repeat that? I didn't quite hear. Yeah, so that, that just does helpful because um, at least we know then whether um, how to the logistics of setting up a steering group for the pro overseeing the project, whether we set up a group or whether we use an existing one that runs a quarterly time frame. So that's useful, thank you. Okay, yes. I, I would say that if you're setting up a steering group, it's useful to bear in mind that this is a project in and of itself. So any steering group you've got for wider work uh, needs at least to, to to be aware of the project as a standalone entity within the wider work. Because very often we find people that don't distinguish between their wider activity and their project funded activity. And it's important that if you've got a project that's funded by us or anybody else, I suppose, it's important that you can account for that at the project level. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, not, that's no problem. Okay, thank you. Any further points before we move forward to um, Hayley? There's a question on the um, message book from Colin Cheeseman. Are attachments exempt from word counts allocated to particular questions 
Yeah, well, okay. Are attachments exempt from word from word counts? Yeah. Yes, the attachments are exempt from word counts. Although I would just again note that please don't just send us hundreds of attachments of uh, documents. It, it, we would only like attachments that are relevant, and if you reference them in the question. You know, if you've got a piece of, uh, I don't know, a, an insurance policy or a piece of research that you would just like to include with your application, you're, you're very welcome to. Please just note in the actual application form in the right question uh, why it's relevant and, and then add the attachment on, Colin. Does that make sense? Okay, and there's a question from Richard Phipps. You can't see at that end, Claire, but um, he's asking the question A7 can you replace it with a, an Excel spreadsheet with the same detail as the table rather than having to com come back to us and get rows added to the form? Yes, and that's absolutely fine, Richard, as well. If you can, if you're happy to put together a, an Excel spreadsheet with exactly the same, capturing exactly the same detail, then you'd be welcome to do that. I think that'll be fine. Okay, any other questions before we move on to Hayley and the finance presentation? Okay, Claire, are you happy to move the screen? Are you able to do that end? Or... Lovely. Here we go. Okay, over to you, Hayley. Andrew Nixon. Has left the conference. Andrew. Um, Hey, hello everybody. Um, my name is Hayley MacDonald Jones. I'm part of the Finance Partnerships team here at NRW and I've been asked today to take you through the financial section of the form. Um, if you have any questions along the way, feel free to type your question in the message box or we've got a section at the end of the finance section to take questions off the phone and I'll do my best to answer the questions at the end. Um, but we might have to take some away um, and in that case, we will answer via the FAQs and let everybody have an answer on them. Um, so section B, financial details, it's in two parts. One part is on the word application form and the second is on the Excel sheet, which came with the application form. Now on the screen now, I have question B1, which is on the word application form. And this just gathers basic financial information about your organisation which should be quite straightforward and ask you to summarise how much funding you require from NRW and how your project will be financed in the two year period. So on to the second part of section B on the main application form. Now you can see that there's a table which asks you how your project is funded over the two years. How much funding you require from NRW, which is a maximum of 50% of the total project costs. And what Andrew Nixon has joined the conference. Andrew's back. Um, how much funding you require from NRW, which is a maximum of 50% of the total project costs, and where the remainder of the funds are coming from. 10% of your total project costs must be clean, unrestricted funds. This means that if you have funds which you are free to use as you see fit, they could be part of this 10%. The remainder of funds can come from other match funders or volunteer time in kind, for example. If you have volunteer time in kind, this should be shown in the applicant's own funds in kind box. The total contribution to the project must balance with your total project costs. Now, I'll go on to the project cost template, which is the Excel sheet now. Um, you might find it easier and more sensible to fill in the project cost template before you complete this table on screen, as the project cost template will tell you how much your project is going to cost. And once you know that, you'll know how many how much contributions you need. So going on to the project cost template, um, you'll see a number of number tabs, and it's important that you complete these tabs sequentially, sequentially as all the cells are linked and feed through to each other. Now, I've tried to make this as user-friendly as possible and tried to make sure that where possible, amounts are calculated automatically and I've tried to ensure that you don't have to complete the same inf information twice. So it might appear big, but we hope that it's not as bad as it might first appear. You can only complete the yellow shaded boxes. The blue shaded boxes are automatically linked and can't be overwritten. 
Now, on tab one, project information, the only information we require are your organization's name and your project name. Please ensure that these match exactly with the information you've provided on the main application form. And below this is a handy checklist to ensure that you've completed each part of the form. Now, going on to the second tab, which is salary calculation, this helps you calculate your staff costs. The name of your project will automatically feed through and then you'll need to insert each role on your project, salary, employers, national insurance and pension, and this will automatically give you the daily cost. Please only use full time equivalent salary and for information we assume 220 working days per annum. Um, if you need further lines on this table, just let you let us know how many lines you need and we'll get it back to you as soon as possible. And going on to tab number three, costings template. This collates your staff, travel, durable goods, consumables, external assistance cost and volunteer time. Your project name, staff role and cost per day will automat automatically feed through from the previous sheets but you will need to tell us how many days are required on the project in table A. The spreadsheet will then calculate the total staff costs for your project. In table B, you give us your travel and subsistence costs. Please respect the mileage rate in the table to the right hand side, or you can of course insert rail travel, etc. if you need to. Now in table C, you can list any durable goods you will need to purchase for your project. Durable goods are capital items which cost over £5,000 each and expected to have a long useful life. In table D, consumables as a costs, you will list all the other items you will need to purchase in order to run your project. So anything which isn't durable and that is can't put into the capital expenditure one. These all subtotal automatically. Now in table E, external assistance, you will list all the services you, you'll be purchasing to run your project. So if you're paying another company to carry out for the service on your behalf, for example, sorry, to put up some fence, <laughs> you will put the costs of that in here. In table F, volunteer time helps you calculate your volunteer time. You will specify the number of volunteers and in the volunteer scale column, you will choose which level the volunteers are working at. This is a drop down box, so you choose the correct level. Once you choose the correct level, the volunteer rate per hour will automatically update. You then need to specify the number of hours they will be working and the spreadsheet will automatically calculate the equivalent cost of the volunteer time. Now we come to tab four, which is overheads. And this sheet helps you calculate and decide how you will charge your overheads to the project. The name of the project, staff costs, travel and subsistence, etc., will automatically feed through from the previous tabs, giving you a subtotal. Now you then have three options on how you want to charge overheads to your project. The first option is to use the 7% rate, and if you've had a a grant with us before you'll be familiar with this. You can add an additional 7% of the total of staff costs, travels and consumables to your project. And the spreadsheet will automatically calculate this for you. If you don't want to use this method, then please delete the amount in this cell. Your second option is to use full cost recovery. And there is a tab which will calculate this for you, which I will come on to. Your third option is to use your own methodology. If you already have a method of calculating your overheads and recharging them to the project, then you may use it, but we will need to see full ration rationale and evidence for this. Now, only one overhead option may be used, so please ensure that only one of these boxes are used. Once you've chosen which option you want to use, the spreadsheet will automatically calculate your total project costs. So going on to tab five, 
I mentioned in the previous slide that you have three options to choose from when it comes to overhead. Option two was full cost recovery, and this sheet helps you to calculate this amount. Now you might want to see how this compares to the 7% rate. So you might decide to complete this, but please remember that only one of the overhead boxes must be completed. So I'll go through this quickly step by step. Um, step one is automatically completed for you. And in step two, you'd li list your annual overhead costs. And there's a bit of an explanation there to help you. Overhead costs are those costs which you cannot directly attribute to just one project. So costs that are shared between projects and departments, so things like rent, gas, electric, etc. Um, insert these costs here and it will provide you with a subtotal. Please only include annual costs and be aware that we will need these costs to be evidenced either by reference to your annual accounts or evidenced by bills. In step three, we ask you to tell us how you are apportioning your overheads. You might decide to share them between the number of staff hours to have a cost per staff hour, or you may decide to apportion them by the square footage of your building, in which, you'll, in which case you'll have a cost per square foot. Now in step four, you need to tell us how many units you are using to share your costs. So if you have used number of staff, how many hours do you have, or if you've used, chosen to use square footage, what is the square footage of your building? If as a result of the project, you'll have additional units, for example, if you're having enough of staff member and therefore have additional staff hours, then you can put it here. In step 4F, you will tell us how many units are going to be used by this project. So if your project will use 100 staff hours over the course of the project, put it in this box. Step 4G, automatically calculates the percentage of total overhead costs absorbed by the project using the information you have provided. So if you have a total of 1,000 staff hours per annum in your organisation and 100 hours on the project, then the percentage of overhead absorbed will be 10%. And step H then multiplies this percentage by the total cost of your overheads to give the amount of overheads attributable to the project. This automatically links back to tab 4 to be added to your project's total costs. Now the final step is in step 5, when we, where we ask you to explain why you have included the overhead costs you've chosen in your calculation and how they relate to the project. We also ask you to explain why you've used the method you have chosen to apportion them. This is so we can understand why you've chosen the method you have chosen just gives a bit of context behind the numbers. Now, I'm sure we're all getting a bit tired of finance now, so I'd be glad to hear this is the final sheet, which is sheet six. Um, this summary sheet brings together all your costs in one place, but you'll need to tell us how you were splitting your costs over the two years. Remember that the total of both years must add back to the total and there's a check total column there, which just makes sure that everything adds up. In the green box, you'll will tell us how much you will like to request from NRW, how much of a grant you require, and this must not be greater than 50% of the total project costs. And now the final bit of the spreadsheet asks you to specify your preferred claim dates and the amounts. This will automatically populate the green total request from another blue box, and both green boxes should match. Now, um, I'll take some questions at this point. Um, I'm going to run through a few just basics, really, but um, I can see we've got some. Can you um, get rid of the top bit so we can see all the questions here? Is that possible? Yeah, yeah, right. I'm just going to go to the message box first, guys, if that's okay. Yeah, bear with us for the moment. questions there so we'll just read through these. okay ian danby um can i check that the 10 percent clean funds the original eoi could be read that you have to provide 10 percent of your 50 percent match a eie a hundred thousand pound project would require fifty thousand pounds of match funding five thousand pounds of which would be clean funds 
a form is written that you need to provide 10% of the total project cost in cash. So £10,000 for a £100,000 project, which is a correct interpretation, thanks. Yeah, I'm very sorry about this, Ian. Um, the original EOI, it could be misinterpreted, so that, that it did read as if it was 10% of the 50% match, but that was incorrect, I'm afraid. I can confirm it's 10% of the total project costs that you need. Um, Colin Cheeseman's asked, can you explain why you need to know about agri-environment funding in B1? Our project involves public, third sector and private landowners to answer this major programme of work. We are not expecting to match agri-environment, not, not to duplicate what is already being funded from um, agri-environment. Um, to be honest, Colin, I'm not familiar with agri-environment funds and I developed that part of the form. So if it's okay with you, we can take that back and answer it by the via the MVQ by the not the MVQs the uh, FAQs. Um, Nina, B1 other monies from NRW or any other public body. Um, as a local authority, we receive funds from many different areas across the council. It would not be appropriate to provide all of that information. Would information for just our service be acceptable? Yes, um, Nina, I just just consult my notes um if you can just to clarify if you can confirm the funding that you're receiving from nrw and for all other funding if you can confirm the funding you receive for that the, the, the piece of work that you're asking the project for we just need to know if you're receiving any funding for the piece of work that you're bidding for so if you can provide that, that gives us a control that we're not double funding. That would be fine. I hope that's um, clarified that. Um, any other questions on the phone? Um, I've got a question. Can you hear me? Yes, can. Yes. All right. Hi. Um, it was sort of linked to the last one, really. Um, I'm calling from the National Trust. And uh, when you're talking about uh, other funding and did... I wanted to clarify that it meant for the project itself we're talking about, not for, say, the whole organisation. Yeah, it's for the project, yes. We we would like to okay. know what other money you're getting from NRW, because of, of, yeah. if we're a big organisation, we need to find out what, all that. But for the project itself, for the other funds, yes, if I could confirm that. Okay, thank you. Any other questions at this point? Um, yeah, I've got one about the external um, assistance. Yeah. Just thinking about the quotes here, are you making the, ex the assumption in the cost that we provide that that's inclusive of VAT? I think it, um, I might need to take this one away just to clarify it. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, it would be good if just that gets clarity on the VAT issue. Yeah. I, is your com, is your organisation do you recover VAT? Well, we're a local authority, but we just want to make sure. Um, yeah, when I we get folks when we're doing the right thing. I think you. Um, I will clarify this in the FAQs and just make sure. But from the top of my head, if you're not paying VAT then all your claim amounts should be net so you would put in the net amount in the external assistance um, in the external assistance um, part of the spreadsheet but I just need to go away and clarify that for organisations that have to that can't recover their VAT. That's great thank you. Uh, hello can, can you hear us? Yeah I can yeah. Brilliant we've unmuted ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Just a quick question um, on section B. Anything over five thousand goes in the durable goods, but what, where would you put um, items under that? Is that under the contractors? No, that's under so buying... consumables. Yeah, you... Other costs. Consumables, other costs. Got yeah. Yeah. Um, I just had a question from Richard Phipps. I thought these projects have to be new, so if people are already receiving. NRW funding, then they shouldn't be eligible, and if they are, it's double funding. Yeah, that is, that's basically the point of the question, Richard. We just need to, we're just making, 
we will obviously be checking internally that these projects aren't already funded by us, but it's just a, a, a double guard dog at the door, if you see what I mean. Um, Layla's asked, do I recall correctly that the funding in stage two has to match identically that requested in the EOI, or is there scope, some scope from variation? Um, yeah, we're, we're saying that we can't um, accept applications that are greater than the greater. amount in the EOI. Yeah. Greater than, yes. Yeah, so... But they can be within that maximum value there can be some variation can't there yes, it can be it can be below but it can also rejig the the allocation to specific specific activities within they don't think in the eoi they even put it in no we only uh, have a only total a amount in the amount. eoi okay. so yeah, yeah it can the, yeah. the answer is it doesn't have to match but it can't be more So, any other questions from anybody? Okay, well, I'm going to carry on and go through um, go through with some basic principles. And these, I'm, I'm not going to repeat myself too much because we went over this in the EOI stage. But I'll just go through some basic principles and then um, just a little bit of time then to get some more questions if there are any. Um, so ensure that you are aware of the differences between a partner and the supplier. If you were paying for a service and they are a supplier, um, in, and in order to be a partner, they would need to make a contribution to the project. Um, and then next slide, please, Claire. Oh, and just as a reminder there of the um, ineligible cost. Hopefully, you would have been aware of these at the EOI stage. Um, so, in the slide on staff costs, um, so building all staff costs for po posts that will be directly involved in the project only include staff costs which would occur as a direct result of project activity. Um, staff must be officially seconded to the project and as I've been through, you need to specify how many days each person will spend on the project. Right, um, match funding. Um, lead partner needs to make a 10% of total project cost contribution, which must be clean. Um, all parties, all partners are expected to make a contribution to the project, either in kind or in cash. Um, if you're using staff time as match, then you must be able to prove that the work wouldn't have taken place if the project did not exist. And, and then if you just a little bit more on general principle, um, I've already said about the 10% contribution, um, make sure that your figures are accurate as possible, which you know is, is benefit to you. The total cost the total contributions must, must match the total cost of your project and funding cannot be um, offered retrospectively or paid in advance. Um, and it's just a question from Colin there about so whether yeah. contributions can be in kind. I think you've answered yeah, that answered, nearly. Yeah, they can do. Yeah, yeah. They can be in kind. Yeah. So any other questions before I hand back over to Claire? If partners, yes. Yeah. Sorry, there's there's a um, question from Lucy. If partners are contributing in kind staff time, what kind of evidence would you require for this? Would we have to be getting partners to submit timesheets? Yes, Lucy, you would. That would be part of your evidence for the claim. Any more questions? Before we move on. Any more questions? Uh, yeah, it's from oh, the maximum cost for the EOI. Can you go higher if the amount of funding from NOW is not increased? Can you go higher if the amount of funding from NRW is not increased? Don't really understand. Well, so if they if they said let's say it was a hundred thousand and they uh, and that therefore they were taking fifty thousand from NRW. Yes. If it's now one hundred twenty thousand, they're still only asking for fifty thousand from NRW. Would that be permissible? 
Fifty percent is our maximum yeah, intervention rate. rate. But bring their intervention rate down. It would just so the projects become more expensive. But then it's asking for the quality of. Uh, yeah. 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 Would that be okay? Well, we. I think we'll put this in the FAQs. Um, it's a delicate question, isn't it? Because yeah. we don't want to bypass the rule, which is applicable to everybody that says in the OI there is a maximum and you can't go beyond that. Uh, so we'd have to look at this just a little bit more carefully. Yeah. And Nina, um, we are the city council. Would you want these from a local authority? I guess you're asking about um, the evidence required for the overhead. Um, we wouldn't usually ask for audited accounts from a local authority but if you're using the full cost recovery method we do need to see where you had your overhead costs from the rest question the section eight right um let's see Is the checklist, isn't it? No. Um, can you just clarify which second is it? The um, because I've got section E here. On... Oh, that's I think that's the checklist and declaration right at the end, you mean, there, Nina, don't you? So, I think, um, sorry, I'm just trying to yeah. find it myself. I think one of the things we have in a checklist is, um, <laughs> thank you, is um, the audited accounts. I think, from a local authority perspective, we wouldn't expect no. that if that's right Hayley but um, for a, a, another sort of third sector type organization we would ask that that wouldn't you know if you can include that as the application that's great and I got a question from Lynn um, will each claim have to show 50% intervention rate of this can be annually shown yeah it's as long as in the financial year that you're not exceeding the intervention rate within the financial year, then there is some flexibility there. So some quarters you can claim more and some quarters you can claim less. As long as it all balances out at the end of the financial year, that's okay. But please be aware that um, I would need to take this through to the FAQs, but we don't usually allow carryover over financial years. Um, so it's March, it'd be March, and we ask claims to, co to come in um, by mid-March, which gives us an opportunity just to check your claims and to get them paid by year-end. Okay, so... Question from Lynn there about... Yeah, I've just answered that. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there any other questions before I hand back to Claire? Um, hello. Hi. Hi, uh, Alison Heal from Kerry Digion. Um, do we have to claim quarterly? No, you don't have to claim quarterly. You don't have to? No. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's, uh... Okay, Claire, so I guess um, there will be another opportunity for questions as well, but I'll hand back over to Claire now for the rest of the application form. Hi, can I just clarify something? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, with the, um, with the sort of the distribution of claims, claiming for funds between over the two years, so you're saying that like 50% needs to be claimed in the first year, but we can, it can be distributed unevenly throughout the quarters, but at 50% of our total claim needs to be claimed in that one financial year, then 50% of in another financial no, year. We no, no. Oh, sorry, yeah, just to clarify, no, it's up to you how you want to spread it over the two financial years. But once you've said that you want, let's say you've got um, a 10,000, well, a 20,000 pound project and you want um, 12 in the first year and eight in the next year, then you yeah. have to, once we've got those budgeted amounts in, we don't usually allow a carryover. So if you spend, you know, if you claim 10 in the first year, then we can't usually car um, carry over two. But I will take that back and just get a, a definitive answer on it. 
Okay, and what if you claimed more in the first year, or can't you do that either? No, not usually allowed. Not for we haven't um, done that in previous grant rounds. That's all I can say. But I, um, it's not usually allowed, and I'm ninety percent sure. But I will take it back and and um, give you a definitive answer over the FAQ. Okay, so that's got to be totally accurate then, literally, hasn't it? To the, to yeah. the nearest pound. Yeah. Otherwise, it. Yeah. Otherwise. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Thank you. Okay, Claire, do you want to to go on the next bit? Yeah, thank you. Um, sorry, hello. Um, I'll okay. heal again. At the bottom of tab five, that is, I think, from line 171 down, there's a load of other tables. I'm assuming they're nothing to do with us. Is there? Right, um, oh, we can't see, I can't see the... Yeah, bear with us. Uh, 173 through to 200 and something. Right, okay. Oh. Um, I'm afraid Sorry. Yeah. I don't have the actual spreadsheet in front of me. I've only got the PowerPoint, but I'll have a look at that and confirm yeah. because if it if if there is things on the end, then I shouldn't be there. That then they shouldn't be there. That's I'll have probably a look at that. thing, but just to be sure. Okay, okay. thank we'll, you. We'll put that on the FAQs. Right. <laughs> 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 okay, Claire, over to you then. Unless any. Uh, any final questions? We'll move on to Claire then. Okay, Claire, over to you. Okay, thank you. So um, yeah, I'm just going to pick up quickly now the, the other two sections, which are optional, depending on uh, what other support you were requesting from uh, NRW. If you weren't access, it, you didn't want to require access onto NRW managed land, or if you've already got an established agreement that you can use for this project, you can skip right over Section C. You can just ignore it. So um, that, that's hopefully good news for some of you at least. Um, so section, sorry has left the conference. Okay. Okay. Um, so section C, the section's not scored and, and it's not subject to competition. Um, we have got a number of projects going forward in this round that would like to access NRW managed land, some in a very informal way where um, applicant just um, wants to go on and, and do some data type gathering and others where applicants... Andrew Nixon. Some... Has left the conference. Um, and other applicants are looking to look for a long-term lease for community use. Uh, normally, an applicant would need to go through two different processes to get that permission. Um, so we recognised in both processes we were asking for very similar information. So what we've tried to do is bring these two together to minimise your efforts in, in filling out different forms for NRW. So this is a new approach for us, so please bear with us as we try and smooth things out. Um, if you complete this form if, if you need access, then you will not also need to complete a Menethiad form or the old Woodlands and Youth form. So this will uh, do that piece of work for you. Um, hopefully it's fairly self-explanatory. Uh, question C1 is around noting any previous land access agreements your organisation might have had either with NRW or perhaps with our legacy bodies, uh, Countryside Council for Wales or Forestry Commission. Um, C2 is just to highlight how much access you need. For example, do you just want to be on there uh, accessing the land for six months to undertake some monitoring work, or are you looking for, for example, a 20-year community lease? So if you can just give us some information there about what it is that you would like. Uh, this is um, asking for um, yeah, just some more information about the land. So C3, are you aware of other parties using the land? There are some quite complicated agreements on some NRW estates with different landowners. We don't always own the land. So if you're aware of that or we've had discussions already, if you can explain that in the text box for us. And question C4 is asking about funding beyond the grant request. So if, for example, if you are asking for um, a 20-year uh, lease, uh, to use the land with the local community. Obviously, this grant funding is only, actually only for 18 months. So there'll be things that you'd be wanting to do after the 18 months. So you might need um, public liability insurance or you might be wanting to do maintenance work on footpaths, things like that. So have you got a plan as a community group how you might 
um, you know, access other types of funding or how you're going to have agreements in place to um, manage the project after the 18 months of NRW grant funding. If you've got any questions on any aspects of these, please do feel free to email us. And question section D is around um, uh, access to data and information. So a number of you did request access to data. Um, we shared these outline requests with our data team, and in some cases, uh, we were able to give applicants information, um, or we sent links to data Andrew. sets that Have publicly joined the conference. Um, but some applicants, we weren't able to give the information, perhaps we were lacking detail or to be able to give us enough information to drill down into the right bit of information. And if that's the case, then that's just what Section D is trying to get. So we're trying to get, get a better understanding of exactly what it is, um, the geography of the data, the timescales. Hey, the Town data. Council has left the conference. This section is also not scored. If we have the data and we can make it available to you, that's what we're aiming to do. Though we might need to issue an a license um, to do that. So we will we'll, um, try to gather that, get, find out what it is that you're after, and we'll see how we can um, proceed and, and get you what you need. Um, some expressions of interest also ask for other forms of support, such as access to technical expertise or a use of piece of equipment, that sort of thing. So question D2 is about including a bit more detail in here. Um, if you could give us as much information as possible, for example, the number of hours you need access to a piece of equipment or something like that. Um, again, this is not scored, but will be considered at the panel meeting. We have had a wide variety of requests here. Um, we may not be able to deliver on all of them, especially if there's a financial implication or significant demand on staff time. But the more detail you can give us, the better we can assess if we can support you with this. Um, and also, just to note, we're unlikely to support significant requests for staff time. Um, and a point that was raised before, if an NRW staff member is involved anyway. So, for example, Colin, you mentioned the steering group and, and our engagement with that. We don't need to mention that here. That's an ongoing kind of role that NRW has. That's OK. This is additional support that you'd be looking for NRW for. I'll just pop now to the last section. So section E, so everybody will need to complete this bit, even if you've skipped over C and D. Section E is the checklist and declaration by the applicant. Um, it's just, uh, yeah, the check box is there. If, you, if you've got audited accounts available, confirmations of match funding, if that's available to you, tick the box and, and add them in with your application. That would be great. Um, you send it to the organisational email by our mailbox by midnight on the 23rd of April. I should note that I don't think myself and the team will be there till midnight that night. So um, if, uh, we, if, you're, if you'd like to get a response and make sure that it's arrived, please do um, send it during the day. It would be great. Or even the week before would be wonderful. Um, and we can give you an acknowledgement that we've received it. And, and also just to note, um, if your project has changed since the EOI and you have um, an additional or change to your declaration of interest, um, please get in touch with us and we'll send you out a, another form just to capture that extra declaration of interest. Otherwise, we'll assume it's um, as per your expression of interest. I'll just stop there for a minute just to ask if anyone's got any questions. Yes, can, Colin uh, raised a question on, on a text uh, and he asks, is there a publicly available map of NRW land, for example, on Slay or Magic? Um, Jenny, I, I don't. Do you... I don't think there is. I think it's something we're working on. Um, I'm not a GIS expert by any means, but um, obviously the three legacy bodies had their own maps of of the land. So bringing all those together, um, there there is one of the forests. There's one of the NNRs. Yeah. But, um, but the, the good for people toolkit is, is something that's been um, developed, um, but it's something we, we we're working on. But I I would put that in the FAQs and take that to one of our um, GIS experts. They might know more about that. Okay. Perhaps we should log that as an FAQ. Yeah. Um, okay. We'll do that. 
There's another question coming in um, from Ian. You can get Welsh Government Woodland Estate maps on sale, and this is the bulk of NRW's land. So that will cover the... Okay, that's helpful, isn't it, Jenny? Yeah. That's the woodland bit, but there's... We perhaps own more bits than just the woodland, yeah. I think, don't we? Nature reserves. Nature reserves, Helga, yes, you're right. That's another component, which is additional to the woodland. Um, but that's a good point. Today is a, a good place to start. We, we'll just check that out before we give a, a final answer then. We'll put that on the FAQs, but thank you very much for that. Any other questions before Claire moves on? Um, just one more sort of general question, uh, please. Um, are we able to see the scoring system, see what the weightings are for different questions and things like that? That's coming up next. <laughs> yeah, OK. <laughs> uh, premonition there. Uh, OK, shall we move on to that then? No more questions? No more questions. OK, we'll move on to that. OK, so... Um... As promised, the scoring. So there is more detail in the guidance document. So I would sort of urge you to look at that really as the first point. Um, but just to note in this presentation, there are seven gateway questions, basically. So when we get the applications in, um, the first thing we'll do is double check these questions. And if your application doesn't um, score a yes on these questions, then it won't go any further. So do please make sure you know, you've got your your, all your bits in place and your overheads and your 10% um, is all there identified in the forms because the, the finance team will be checking those first. And then we move on to the scoring questions. So I've just summarised it here on this on this slide. So you can see, as I mentioned before, at A6, the scoring starts. Um, and at A6 through to A12, they're scored from 1 to 10. Um, but there are different questions are weighted. So you can see that I read it off for those people that are on the phone and can't see this in front of them. So question A6 is a, a, a times two weighting. A7 is an A times three weighting, uh, which is that's the outputs and um, uh, outputs and outcomes work. Um, questions A8, A9 and A10 are all a times one weighting. That's the equality, diversity, Welsh language and publicity and communications. Project management at A11 is a times two weighting, and sustainability beyond the grant is a times one weighting. So that might help you as you're, you're filling the form in. Um, section B, which is the finance section, um, basically projects will be assessed for financial risk. So this includes some um, doing value for money uh, review, um, any previous track record you might have with NRW. Um, and each of the projects then will get a risk scoring, and that risk scoring will go to the panel and be considered with the other bits of scoring. If you score highly in a high risk level, it is unlikely that you would go forward for funding, um, but you know, not 100% if it's a you know particularly important project, but um, mostly we would expect projects to be a low or medium risk from a financial perspective to go forward. Is there anything you want to add to that, Hayley, or is that...? No, that's a good summary. Thanks, Claire. But yeah. just to note, if you're just the track record bit, because that came up before, if if you're a new organisation and have not had funding from us before, so don't have a previous track record, you'll just get a neutral risk score for that element. So don't worry about that. If you haven't got a track record with us, it won't count against you. You'll just get a neutral score. And just to... Again, this is in the guidance, so you'll be able to see it in more detail. This is just a table of how we'll get from the one score of zero through to score 10. So you can see there if, if what you've put in your application is very clear and robust and gives the scorers good confidence that you're going to deliver, then you've got a, you get a score of sort of eight or 10. Um, but if what we've got is um, difficult to understand, we don't have... Um, uh, confidence that there's capable of being delivered as described and that's the zero score with grades in between so hope that helps
and that, that was this final screen is the list of named people who can give you more information of your general inquiries so make a note of that and actually there is one thing i forgot to mention earlier and um, you should all have received by now an invitation from um one of those people on the list for an invitation for a one-to-one -one meeting uh, and the purpose of that is to clarify any specific queries you have about your project which is not relevant to be discussed in, in a public forum like this um, and um, also to go over whether if you understood the, the feedback you received and if, if there was some if you have if the feedback you received from your EOI actually misled you or was, wasn't clear that's a Point which to, uh, to clarify it. So you okay, should so all you, have received the email. Has gone out recently. I think all the. I think I'm right in saying that all the um, uh, panel coordinators, who are those names listed under the contact, I think they've sent them all out now. Okay. Well, as a panel coordinator for the All Wales one, an email hasn't gone out yet, Helga, for oh, that, I and I don't think for South either. I think possibly just North and Mid. Okay. Uh, they're still being organised. So you will hear, um, you'll be contacted shortly. Okay. Okay, that's good. So. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, go on. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hi, it's, it's Jill Wells here in Abergavenny. Uh, just on the one-to-ones, I just want to check for those uh, people who are on the call that they have received invites to the, the number of one-to-one -one sessions that we're all been organising across Ops South. They, those invites went out a week or so ago. And are going to be held at a number of locations across up south in the coming weeks. So if you have if you have had a an invitation to, to attend one of those, but haven't responded yet, could I urge people perhaps to get in touch with me so that I can book them in? Good point, Jill. That's valuable thought. So the up south ones, the invitations have gone out. So make sure yeah. you you book a session if if you want a session. Absolutely. Okay, um, we're just checking questions. Yeah, okay, okay we think we're up to speed on questions. Um, the final bit is the general questions. If anybody has any general questions, things we haven't covered, then there's an opportunity to speak now. So anybody with any final questions before we close? Can I just... <clears throat> Sorry, can I just ask if it's possible to know um, who else in an area has got through to the next stage in terms of looking for you know, potential partners or um, crossovers? Um, well, sadly, because this is a competitive round, we've been asked by our legal team that we don't disclose the identity of those people moving forward to the next stage. And so we haven't done that. That's the reason for it. Um, I know this is an issue for some people, but not for others. Uh, but in this round, we aren't able to disclose that, that information directly from, from the center. So I, 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 we apologize for that, but we, we aren't able to do it for legal reasons. OK, thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Nobody's writing anything either, so I think we can take that as a, a cue to terminate the the transmission. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. Oh, just a moment. Is there one? No. Okay. We will close at this point. Thank you all very much for linking in. Dear Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.